Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Bible Talk Live. I am Bill Rhodes. I am Brian Carey. And this is Doug McKinney. Well, guys, we are together again, and uh, we, we want to let people know right up front that uh, we're doing this program early, uh, earlier than normal this That's week. Right. And so we are right in the midst of Mission Week, Vacation Bible School. We're going to talk about that because it's ongoing, and some are going to see this on Wednesday night. And then we're going to talk about Super Sunday for Sunday morning, uh, for a Sunday morning audience uh, who will be listening on the radio. And so we are excited about all of this. In fact, we are sitting right in the midst, for those, of the, uh, for those who can see us, right. we are sitting right in the midst of a vacation Bible school backdrop. And so we've got big fake crayons around us and all <laughs> kinds of things. Uh, but it's actually kind of fun, Doug. It is. And I appreciate you kind of setting the stage for us here because this is a taped program. It will air on Wednesday night. We are doing it a little earlier than that, trying to uh, get everything to fit into our schedule for this week because Mission Week is a very busy week. Brian, uh, we do double duties Mission Week. Mission week uh, this year, we've got the, the missions that go on during the day. It breaks around 3, 4 o'clock. We go home for a short period of time. Then we're back for vacation Bible school, which ends around 845. This is a full week, a full day, a full event. You know, there's there's even some people that are, after that's all over, they come back and they do uh, uh, praise worship practice and band and people running sound that's and right. equipment. It's like... They're running triple duty just to make do as much as they can for, for the church, for the community around us, to do everything they can. And you know what? You couldn't find a, a more serving, a wonderful group of hearts uh, to surround yourself with. It's just been, uh, it's, a, it's a lot of work, but I, I don't think I've ever worked so hard and felt so, so good and so well pleased with all the people around me as I, as I do during Mission Week. Yeah, the last two mornings, uh, as you know, and uh, uh, Bill as well, we've, we've circled around and we've had prayer together before we've left to go serve. And uh, it's amazing to see all the different faces, Bill. It's amazing to see how many people in this congregation at Christ Church in Bowling Green, Ohio, who love Jesus and love people. Yeah, you know, I, and I don't know why this is, but every time we start Mission Week Monday morning, I'm shocked. Yeah, <laughs> and all the people. I, yeah, I pulled I pull in, and, and Sherry and I were a few minutes late on Monday, on Monday morning, and I pulled in, and the parking lot's just filled with cars. And I'm just, this is the first day, the first hour, and, and it's just filled with cars. And we come inside, and it's filled with people, and there's all kinds of things going on. Uh, we, have, we have people who are fixing breakfast every morning That's and right. people who are fixing lunch. Now, in the past, we've had one lady plus all of her helpers who have done that. This year it's different. We have different people doing it every day. Yeah. And uh, really amazing uh, the kind of food that we're getting and, and how wonderful it is. And so, uh, yeah, just uh, it, it's just remarkable how many people take time. Many of them, by the way, are giving up a week's vacation to yeah. do this. Yep. They may have more than one week, so they do other things. But they're giving up a week's vacation just to be here. Or they're giving up a, a vacation that's maybe two or three days so they can be here two or three days. Yeah. You know, whatever it is. And uh, it really is remarkable, Doug. It is. And, and I just feel so blessed of the Lord to be a part of that. Uh, it is encouraging to me, and, and I know it's encouraging to everyone who comes and is a part of that. Again, we'll let folks know that this is a taped program. And so some of the stuff that we talk about is ongoing right now. Those who watch this program Wednesday night on YouTube and Facebook, uh, they will be able to see us. And as you said, we're on set right now. Vacation Bible School is all around us. Uh, you can still come and be a part of that. Vacation Bible School starts at 6.30, goes to 8.45 p.m. And then we've got our Super Sunday coming up this Sunday, which is uh, actually July 17th. That will be at 10 a.m. And uh, you are welcome to come and be a part of that. Now, if you're listening on WFOB, Brian, all that's left is Super Sunday. But Super Sunday is not uh, any small means. It is a big deal when we do Super Sunday. It is. There's a whole lot of stuff going on. I, I'm sure we're going to talk about that in a little bit. I, I hate to give too many spoilers <laughs> coming up, but this is uh, this is just a fantastic uh, week. You know, the people, like Bill said, are a lot of folks are taking vacation to come and, and serve the community. And, uh, you know, it's a time where we can actually spend with each other you know sometimes you get it's it's sundays you're, you're you're busy you get a chance to say hi and goodbye and you don't get a lot of opportunity maybe to to spend you know bonding quality time and make you know build friendships you know but jesus said um 
you know, when 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 I was uh, naked, you clothed me. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was in jail, you came and visited me. And the, the apostles are like, what? When did we do any of that stuff, Lord? And he said, when you do it to each other, you did it to me. And I really feel like this is a, a week where we can have the opportunity to kind of put that in practice. We spend some time laboring together, working together, helping each other. You know, you might just bring somebody a glass of water. You might send, spend uh, half the afternoon talking to somebody. And it's it's so much more than you can get on a typical Sunday morning, and uh, it's and, and and I think that that's not just um, an act of helping each other. That's that's really an act of loving Jesus as well. When we when we love each other, we love the Lord. Yeah, and that really brings us to the title of our program. Our title for this week is God's Love at Work. Uh, truly, God's Love at Work. And when you say what you said, Brian, about uh, uh, as Jesus said, uh, you know, to those who were uh, serving others in different need, uh, they said to the Lord, uh, the Lord said, well, you know, when I was in prison, you visited me. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. They said, well, when did we ever see you in prison and thirsty and hungry? And, and he said, when you've done it to the least of these, my brethren, you've done it to me. Mm. And so that is exactly what this week is about. Uh, this program that we're talking about, Bill, we're going to spend time talking about how we really need to see God's love at work. Yeah, I, that's absolutely right. And sometimes, you know, we, we often think as Christians, it's about presenting that to other people in, in, in the community. And it is. We, we want to do that. You know, we were working uh, yesterday f uh, for a couple of older men who are having trouble cutting the grass and, 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 you know, cleaning their home. And so we were, we were doing that. So we're reaching out to people uh, who may not be Christians, who may not know God. Uh, but, but it's also a ministry to one another. I mean, sometimes those people who are uh, in need are standing right next to us. They, they, are, they are here uh, helping, and, and yet at the same time, they're struggling. And so sometimes uh, the ministry that we do can be uh, with the people just around us. We have devotionals uh, during the day, uh, in the morning and, and in the afternoon. Uh, we, we have a Bible study that that's we right. engage in at lunchtime. And, and that's all for us. That's right. Uh, because of the great needs that we have. Amen. Amen. So this morning on Bible Talk Live, this is a presentation from Christ Church in Bowling Green, Ohio. And again, if you are listening to us on 1430 AM WFOB, we still have Super Sunday to come. We invite you to come and be a part of that. Christ Church meets at 14455 Campbell Hill Road, Bowling Green, Ohio. If you want more information on that, please, as always, visit us at ccbg.life. That's ccbg.life. All things Christ Church can be found at ccbg.life. And as I was alluding to earlier, and now we'll speak it clearly, uh, when we are on Bible Talk, we are always turning people's hearts and minds, Brian, back to God's Word. We do believe that the answers to all of life's problems are found in the pages of God's Word and in the living Word, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we are always turning people back to God's Word, trying hard to get them to open up the book, to dive in, and to see what God has in store for them. And Brian, this morning, no exception to the rule. We're going to be in 1 John chapter 3, verse 16 through 23. And are you prepared to read? It is a privilege to be able to read this. So Amen. yes, first, not John, but 1 John 3, 16 through 23. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation of Scripture, which says... We know that, <clears throat> excuse me, we know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. So we also ought to give up, give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. If someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need but shows no compassion, how can God's love be in that person? Dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth mm. by our actions. Our actions will show that we belong to the truth, so we will be confident when we stand before God. Even if we feel, this is a wonderful verse, even if we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings, and he knows everything. Mm. Dear friends, if we don't feel guilty, we can come to God with bold confidence, and we will receive from him whatever we ask because we obey him and do the things that please him. And this is his commandment. We must believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another 
just as he commanded us. Such a power-packed passage of Scripture. Uh, Bill, when we look at this passage of Scripture, one of the questions that has to come to mind is this. How do we know Jesus loved us? <clears throat> if I go around talking about Jesus loves everyone, how do we know Jesus loved us? In verse 16, we are told, by this we know love. And that is, Bill, because Jesus laid down his life for us. Yeah, I like something he also says in uh, chapter uh, uh, 4. He says, we love him because he first loved us. And so God is the one who, who gave us the way of love. He is the one who showed us what love was. Uh, I'm absolutely convinced that without God, man wouldn't know what love was. Amen. We would, you know, we, we would all be completely self-centered, completely self-thinking, completely uh, self-absorbed. Mm. Uh, I think none of us would think about others except where it benefited us. That's right. And, and so I'm absolutely convinced that without God, we don't know really what love is. And he showed us what love is. Uh, he, he loved us in, in that he sent, God loved us, and that he sent his son to die for us. God loved us. Uh, uh, Romans chapter 5 says, while we were still enemies to him. And, and that's one of the most remarkable passages in all of Scripture. You just think about it. While we were alienated from God, while we were enemies to him, that's when he showed his love for us. I mean, how amazing uh, is that to realize that God loves us that much uh, to give his son, and Jesus loves us that much to sacrifice himself for us while we were still enemies. And so as we have come into his body, his community of people, uh, he wants us to love one another in the same way. In fact, he, he really equates that with knowing uh, that really comes down to knowing that we are part of God's family. This, this is how we know we are part of who God is. Mm -hmm. Because when we can love like that, especially those who are part of this family, this, this community of believers, then it really says something about who we are. That becomes all important in this uh, discussion. And Brian, as we look at this passage of Scripture, not only do we know how much Jesus loved us by laying down his life for us, but we also get the picture here that he obligated us when he laid down his life for us. Notice what it says. By this we know love because he laid down his life for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. So we've been obligated by this great gift of grace that God has given it, us. It kind of feels like a debt that you need to pay forward, doesn't it? Like this isn't, uh, he gives you this free gift, but... Okay, now you have to do something with it. What are you going to do with this free gift? Are you yeah. going to you know, just hoard this to yourself and stay the same selfish person that you were when you received it? Or are you going to do something about it? I mean, this, this free gift that God gives you of salvation, <clears throat> this is a life-changing thing. And this, this doesn't just uh, bestow life in a vacuum. This, yeah. this changes your life as well. This changes who you are. This changes your mission. You now have a quest, you know, like... You're, you're supposed to go do this thing. What is it? You've now been given this noble quest to go do this new thing. Our, our, our job, uh, as you, you quoted that, so we ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. Like, we're able to follow Jesus' example now. Like, he showed us the way. He loved you more than his own life. So, yeah. so can I do that? Can you do that? Yeah. Uh, and, and sometimes, let me tell you, and I'll just maybe set you yeah. up with this as a question. Sometimes being a living sacrifice is harder because you have to be alive and endure what's going to come next and still be that sacrifice. Yeah, we, How do we do that? When we think about a sacrifice, we think about something being put upon an altar offered to God, and, and that sacrifice was always dead. Uh, but we learn in the book of Romans, uh, in, in Romans chapter 12, that we are to be a living sacrifice unto him. And the problem, as some have said, is that living sacrifices will get off the altar. You know, they, uh, they yep. don't like the pressure. Uh, they don't like the heat. Uh, and so they get off. So what we're reminded here, because in this passage of Scripture, uh, Bill, he says that we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. We may not have the opportunity to do that specifically the way Jesus did. But he makes it really practical for us, doesn't he? He says... We need to lay down our lives for our brethren. And then he starts being specific about some things. But whoever has the world, this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? So here's the truth. You and I may not have the opportunity to die for someone, but we do have the opportunity 
to serve them. And especially if God has blessed us, we can bless others. Yeah, and, and this is more often the opportunity that we have. You know, you know very few people who are, who are martyrs, who, who come to death for God and for his people. Uh, but the reality is that we often have, uh, you know, times in which we can do good to uh, God's people. I love what Paul says about it. He says, do good unto all men. Yeah. but especially those that are of the household of faith. And I love the fact that he talks about us as the household of faith. That's how I talk about my family. This is, this is my home. This is my household. This is, this is the people who are in my household. These are, and these are always special people to me. This is my wife. These are my, this is my son. These are my daughters. These are my grandkids. That's part of my household. And so when we talk about the household of faith, it's exactly the same thing, only that we are, uh, we have come together as God's people, and, and therefore we have this tight, tight bond. So God wants us to do good to anyone we can, and, and we often do that, but especially when it comes to his people, those who are part of our family, uh, he wants us to do good. And and quite honestly, that's the thing that uh, that we're going to be able to do far more often than sacrifice our lives. Uh, we're going to be able to do good to people. Yeah. This morning you are listening to Bible Talk Live. We're glad you're with us. And we want to invite you to come and worship the Lord with us. We have a very special worship service today. Uh, this day at Christ Church in Bowling Green, Ohio is Super Sunday. Uh, Brian, we want to spend some time talking about that and inviting people to come and be a part of that. This special day starts at 10 a.m. today. We are going to have a potluck. It is a worship service that will uh, be a very dynamic worship service. We will be sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ in that service. Uh, we will have rides. We will have gifts for the whole family. Uh, we've alluded to the fact that we're taping this early. Even as we're taping this right now, my pastor's pals are out there uh, working on gifts for the, for the whole family. So if you bring your family Sunday morning, uh, and come and be a part of this, Brian. There will be a gift for you and your family. Wow, that's uh, that's something you don't get any time. I mean, now this world is just filled with uh, all the doom and gloom. If you know, you you can stand on. I don't care what your favorite uh, news channel is. It's all filled with doom and gloom right now. <laughs> How the you know the economy this and war over there and what's going to happen to prices here and all. The, it's just it's never ending. And so for somebody to come in like. Guess what? Come be part of this family. We have gifts for you. It's yeah. just it's it's like a night and day. This is a it's it's a huge contrast. I'm here and it feels like a big contrast to me. I can't imagine that somebody who doesn't already have the Lord in their lives has got to look at this and say, "What are those people doing different over there that I don't have going on over here in my life?" And and I would think you just have to be curious to at least stick your nose in the door and have a look at what Jesus has to offer. Well, and, and people, you know, one of the ways that I, I may not be able to foretell the future, but I can look at the past. I can see how things have been run and done in the past. And I would encourage folks to do that with Bible Talk Live. I, I know they have listened to this program over and over again. Think back and, and, and ask yourself, have we ever asked you for money? Have we ever done anything like that? We've always presented the gospel to you free of charge. There's never been anything that we've done in that way, shape, or form. Uh, the Lord's Church, Christ Church in Bowling Green, Ohio, has paid that fee uh, so that we could do this. And Bill, when people come on Sunday morning, uh, they can they can look at the track record of Bible Talk Live. I'm giving you an invitation on Sunday morning to come. We are not trying to get your money. We're not, we will give you everything right. free on that day. Yeah, uh, it, it is not something that we're trying to to manipulate people. We are upfront about the fact we want to share Jesus with them. Yeah, we don't even pass a plate anymore. You no. know, we started that during the pandemic, and, and we've continued that. And our folks, we, we expect our people, those who are part of this church, to give. But we don't expect it from other people. And you're right. I've been with Bible Talk Live now for years, and we have never once asked anyone for anything. We've always given uh, freely. When we had our Saturday carnivals with, with food to eat, we never asked anyone for a dime. Food was free. The rides were free. Everything is free. That's right. And for Super Sunday, where we're kind of incorporating it all together, it's going to be exactly the same way. It's going to be, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the potluck lunch is, is absolutely free. We ask you for nothing. Uh, the rides for the kids, the things, the games that they do and things like that are all absolutely free. And so we ask for uh, nothing. And, and the message, Doug, is free. It is. We, we, we're, we're not asking people to pay for a message, but I, I like what Brian said. 
because in the midst of all the doom and gloom today, and there's a lot of it, there's a lot of stuff that gets me down. I need the positive message of the gospel. It's a, it, it's a message I've heard a million times and preached uh, myself many, many times, but it's a message that never grows old. It has been around for 2,000 years now, talking about the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and how we can uh, come in contact with the greatest hope this world has ever known. And it's inspired and it's motivating and it's it captivating. Amen. And so uh, we really encourage people to come. Uh, nothing required of you whatsoever. Just come and enjoy the day. And uh, if you want to come back, we'll welcome you back. If Amen. you don't, enjoy this day with us. Yeah, July 17th. That's today, Sunday, July 17th, 10 a.m. Worship service, potluck, rides, games, gifts, at Christ Church in Bowling Green, Ohio, located at 14455 Campbell Hill Road, Bowling Green, Ohio. You can call 419-354-1176. Again, that's 419-354-1176. Or you can check us out online, ccbg.life. Again, that's ccbg.life. Uh, Brian, when I think about this passage of Scripture, I have to ask the question, what value is the church, the Lord's church here in Bowling Green or anywhere she's at, what value is the church if she claims to have love, but her actions never match her claims? Is genuine love more than words? Wow, that's a fantastic question. So, so if the church is just giving you words and gives you no actions, is there any value? Um. Boy, I can point to politicians. I can point to, <laughs> I can point to all yeah, kind of people that, yeah. that, that can do that. Yeah, I, I mean, you're bringing up a great point. I mean, you're, you're, it's kind of one of those, the question, the, the answers in the question. I mean, but you know, I, I, you really bring it home when you say it like that. That the church has to actually have actions. The, action, the church has to do something. Otherwise, you know, the Bible talks about that too. It's like. You walk by a starving person and you say, oh, I'm sorry you're so cold and I'm sorry you're so hungry. Well, gospel is free. Be warmed and filled. And you don't do anything and that person's still starving and hungry. You're like, well, what good are you than a cocker spaniel walking down the road? I mean, there's if you don't do anything for this person, if you don't raise your, your the hand up that God gave you the might and the strength to do what you can do, what was the point of it? Yeah. You know, and we have to follow Jesus' footsteps. I mean, he he gave more and and did more than we can, but we can try to emulate him as much as we can to follow his example, and and do something good. Doug, I think you're exactly right. the 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 church is obligated to not only uh, preach this message of you know change and future and things, but we should do something right now in our community, in, in our lives, in the lives of the family and friends that we have right now here on earth. Because because the kingdom, Jesus said the kingdom is within you. He didn't say, you know, it's it's don't worry about it until the future. I mean, at no point did he did he disobligate you from paying this huge debt that he's basically laid on you. Yeah, and, and Bill, uh, here's another one of those questions: Can you show your love apart from your deeds? Is it possible for you to show your love without doing something. Well, James said no. So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go. So, He's so going to go with James. Yeah, I'm gonna, There's I'm Hallmark gonna, cards now. You can show you it go. with. I'm, I'm going to go with James okay. on, on, on this one, that, that we really express our love by what we do. You can, you can say that you love someone all you want, uh, but when you're not there for them, when you don't do for them, when you don't serve them, when you have that opportunity oh, yeah. to do so, uh, you really don't love them. And so love, love becomes not a feeling. It's not about how I feel about everyone. I, I, can, I can do something good for someone that I've never met before and, and, and don't have any special feeling about them because I don't know them. Right. Uh, but yet I can do something for them that is, in fact, loving. That's what agape love is it, all about. I, I love the King James here. Uh, he uses the word charity. Mm -hmm. uh, with for love when it's agape, the charity, and that's when we have such a feeling for someone that we uh, that we simply do for them, and and uh, that's because God loved us. Again, I love First uh, uh, John uh, chapter four, where he says we love him because he first loved us. So God expressed yeah. this yeah. Uh, before any human being, I think, has ever expressed it. God expressed it. He, he's expressed it uh, throughout history. He certainly expressed it with Jesus, but he expressed it in many other ways as he did for people. I, I mean, even for those who aren't his, 
uh, we find that, that, that the blessings of God in this world even apply to them. They, they receive uh, what is good from God because of God's people in this world. Amen. And, and so uh, the reality is that, that no, you, you cannot say you love someone if you are not charitable toward that person. Yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly. Uh, and you're right, quoting James. Uh, James talks about faith, and he says, faith without works is dead. Yeah. It's a dead faith. Yeah. And he said, there's no way really to show faith apart from works. That's right. Uh, you, have to, you have to do the work. Uh, this passage of Scripture here, Brian says, but whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? The answer to that is no, it doesn't. Uh, my little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And by this, we know that we are of the truth and, listen to this, shall assure our hearts before him. When we believe in Jesus and love one another, Brian, we have confidence and assurance before God. Wow, that's, uh, that's super powerful because even, uh, even like devout Christians, they've given their life to the Lord and they go to church every Sunday and, and, and they think they've got all their stuff together. But you know what? Sometimes you still have this you still have these doubts and you still think, man, I really did do all those terrible things and I wish I hadn't. And what do I do about that? And this next verse here that I'm, I'm I hope I'm not stealing your thunder. Mm. Verse 20, uh, pastor Bill's one of the first people that, uh, brought this out to me. Um, I just think this is incredible. It says, even if you feel guilty, verse 20, God's love is greater than your feelings. Mm -hmm. You know, so my feelings are like, oh, I still feel guilty. I still, you know, yeah, I still uh, stole that book from the library back when I was a kid. I still did, you know, whatever. The, it doesn't matter how big or how small, you know, it, it's not, that's not the point. You, you're, the Bible tells us if you're guilty of one part of the law, you're guilty of the whole law. You're, you're in danger of the judgment because you did this one thing when you were in third grade. It, you know, it doesn't matter. And you're like, oh, but that's not really where most of us stop. Most of us have lived lives where our lives are filled up with, and it, with guilt and problems and things that we've done wrong. And most yeah. of the time, if we can be left alone in the quiet of our own closet and not be accused by anyone, we'll stand there and accuse ourselves. Cause in, in our own, in our own little yeah. quiet voice, we're, we'll condemn yeah. ourselves. Like, I know I did that wrong. Yeah. I know I did that yeah. wrong. You know, the, the funny thing is doubt is always about us. Confidence is always about God. I, mm -hmm. I don't ever have confidence in myself, quite honestly. And so doubt is, you know, when I try to have confidence in myself, that's when I have doubt. Mm -hmm. And when I have, when I place my confidence in God, then I feel right about it. I know it's right. I know God has done what was necessary to bring me to him. And uh, so people that, that have those doubts, and a lot of Christians do, quite honestly, have those doubts, you know, be, and it's because of their sin. But that doubt is, is when they focus all of it on themselves rather than focusing on God. When you focus on God, then and only then can you have confidence. Mm, that is so wow. true. Again, you are listening to Bible Talk Live this morning. We're glad you're with us. We want to invite you to Super Sunday today. Today is July 17th, Sunday, July 17th. At 10 a.m. today, we will have a Super Sunday at Christ Church in Bowling Green, Ohio. We will have worship service, potluck rides, games, and gifts. Come and be a part of it all. And Brian, we'd actually appreciate it if people came in and said, Hey, I was listening to the program, and we came. We, <laughs> yeah. we heard you guys on the radio and, and wanted to see what you looked like because we didn't see the behind-the-scenes program. <laughs> and, uh, and my goodness, we're here because of Bible Talk Live. That would be incredible. It, the, the time delay throws you off. Like you, you, you know, it's like you tell a joke into like a uh, telescope and it goes off into outer space and then you know years go by and then messages come back from other planet like hey that was a great joke you know like the delay from <laughs> from when you say something to when you see those people come and, and say hi or say that they saw you or say that they heard you is uh, it's huge but uh, boy it's it's really re rewarding it's one of those things that uh, you really look forward to so yeah anybody comes i mean pastor bill he's uh, he's here feel free to uh, bug pastor bill with all the questions you possibly can <laughs> he just loves that uh, attack him and pastor Doug will We'll answer anything that, that Bill doesn't and vice versa. That's that's kind of what Pastor we do. Pastor Doug will lead you back to Pastor Bill. <laughs> you can go get those questions answered. But, Bill, as we wind down past this half hour on radio, we've got about uh, four and a half minutes or so left in the program. I just want to make mention of something here. He says, and Brian talked a, a bit about the one side of the equation is that that even when our feelings could make us feel like we're not children of God and we have no assurance, before God. God
God is greater than our hearts. He's greater than our feelings on those things. But John doesn't leave it there. John says there's a way to assure your heart. And the way to assure your heart is by living a life that is faithful to God. If you live a life of love, if you do those things that God has called you to do, verse 21 says, Beloved, if your heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God. When we do and live in those things that God has called us to do, and in particular what he's talking about here is loving our brother, um, when we do that, Bill, we can have confidence before God. We can live a life and know that we're in a right relationship with our Creator. Yeah, I always tell people, because I, I, I've had these questions over the years, and so have you, uh, with, regard to, with regard to that hope that we want everyone to have. We, we don't want them just to have the hope. We want them to feel the hope. We want, yeah. them, we want them to embrace the hope. We want them to believe in their hearts... Uh, no matter what, that if I leave this world today, I'm going to go be with God. That's confidence. Yeah. And it's not confidence based on me. If my confidence is based on me, as I said a moment ago, I, I do nothing but doubt. That's, right. That's confidence based on what God has done and what God has said. And so I think what he's, I think what he's really relating to us here. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> Technical difficulties. We always yeah. have those things in live radio. Go right ahead. <laughs> yeah. And, and now my timer has stopped, so I have no idea where we are. Uh, but, but when people understand, uh, you know, how important that is in life and have that confidence in God, then it really helps us to reach out and do for, the, do for God's people. And I think when we're doing that, we really come to realize how important it all is. And, and really, it begins to build our confidence that we're doing exactly what God wants us to do. Therefore, we belong to Him. Uh, amen. Um, we are down to two minutes uh, left in the program, Brian, and, and I am uh, uh, remiss. Uh, uh, <laughs> wait, what, I've got reservations. <laughs> I'm turning it over to you. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what you do know, you do with that last two minutes, With Brian? that last two minutes, I, I think I'm going to have to just say I want to invite everybody who wants to, anybody in the sound of our voice on YouTube or Facebook, if you're within driving distance, if you're uh, listening to us on the radio, uh, feel free to come. It's Sunday. Uh, you're, if you're on the radio and you're listening to us, you're within driving distance. You can make it here on time. You can be here for our 10 o'clock service. Uh, what's that address again they need to come to? 14455 Campbell Hill Road, Bowling Green, <laughs> Ohio. And uh, we would love to have you come and worship God with us. Super Sunday today, 10 a.m., worship service, potluck, rides, games. We're going to have uh, a, a, a mini carnival out there going on and it's all free to you and your family we would love to have you come and be a part of that uh, as we leave today bill we're going to move right back into that passage one last time uh, and that is this uh, that we know how do we know that god loved us we, we want to pass his love on to others but how do we know that jesus loved us how do we know god loved us bill we cannot see it any clearer than in the cross of Christ because he laid down his life for us. Yeah, and, and, and who does that? But God did that. That's right. And so we are, we are tremendously grateful to him for what he has done and the way he has blessed us and the hope that we have. And uh, he shared this love with the world through the cross. And every human being created in his image, every human being is created in his image. And therefore, every human being can come to him on his terms and embrace Jesus and be saved. I love what he says. And I'll kind of close with this. In uh, 1 John, uh, or 1 Peter chapter 3, he says, Finally, all of you should be of one mind. He's talking about God's people. Sympathize with each other. Love each other as brothers and sisters. Be tenderhearted and keep humble attitudes. Mm -hmm. That is just a wonderful passage. Mm -hmm. We love God and we know God loves us because we love his family. Amen. Well, join us next week on Bible Talk Live. Thank you. <laughs>